Let's hit him. Let's hit him with the intro. Dear Chabler and welcome. That's right. You know what time it is. It's time to sit down and sacrifice a section of your life to learn about a camera that you may or may not want. But by the end of this video, I want your opinions to be solidified. I want you to say to yourself, when you look yourself in the mirror and you say, man, I'm a tiger, I am an animal, Rrr, hear me, hear me go -rrr. But I also want you to look at that mirror and I want you to look at yourself deep in those little pupils of yours, those little fibrous. I don't know why this just turned into an ASMR. I don't know why that just happened, but that just happened. <laughs> we're getting off track. Well, I guess we can't get off track because we started off track. So we're just continuing off track. We're just allowing it to go. So where was I going? So I want you to look at that mirror. <coughs> I want you to look at that mirror. See yourself and let your psyche realize that you are looking back at yourself. So this is like a closed circuit thought process. It's just you and that mirror. And I want you to look at yourself and say confidently, I'm either a Sigma person or I'm not a Sigma person. By the end of this video, I want you to be able to say to yourself, man, I think I'm a Sigma person. I think this is my jam. And I've been just waiting because a lot of these Sigma videos, you end up watching it and then you still have so many questions and you're still scratching your head whether or not, hey, is this the right camera for me? Is this really? I don't know. It still seems like so much of a gamble. That's what I thought every time I watched a video. I was like, yeah, I suppose that works. I suppose that sounds like the best camera ever made, but I still didn't know. There was still a bit of doubt there. So here's the, the video. And this video, by the way, you probably you probably already know, but for those who don't, the Sigma DP2 Merrill is the holy grail of Sigma DP cameras. Okay, this is the DP of, of dreams. This is the holy grail. This is where that old guy's sitting there and he's got all the cups and you know, they were searching for the Indiana. Old, old Indy. Oh, Indy. What did, what did Sean Connery call him? Junior, Junior, oh Junior. Should probably do a better accent than that. That was pretty. That was pretty average. But it is what it is. You know, ju Junior, ju Junior, oh Junior, oh Junior. Um, when they go and they find that cup, you know, and that's like the Holy Grail. This is the Holy Grail of Sigma cameras. This is it. Okay. And you can dispute me on that, but hey, check out DP review. Check out what all those. Pe oh, I'm doing the air co commas again. People are talking about air quotations. Sorry, not air commas. <laughs> oh my goodness, who does air commas? Oh, lols, lols, cringe eyes. Um, yeah, so we are looking at the best of the best. So if this doesn't entice you into getting a Sigma DP camera, nothing else will, okay? Nothing else will. Um, I'm not going to go over the whole thing of what is a um, Fovian sensor, because if you're watching this, you should already know. If, if you are literally watching this video and you have no idea what a Fovian sensor is, um, <clears throat> Google it, uh, research it, I've got it in previous videos, if you look at my review of the Sigma DP3 Quattro, you know, <clears throat> I don't want to seem like pompous, but I'm just not going to get into it, okay, I'm not getting there, we're not going to talk about geeky stats, I'll tell you what, I'll lie, I'll tell you the stats right now on this bad boy, just real quick so we can get it out of the way, okay, body type, it's a large sensor compact, I find that a bit strange because it's only a crop sensor, let's relax, okay, I wouldn't say it's a large sensor compact, but apparently that's how they rate these, it's APS-C, okay, it's APS-C, so for some of you, that might be large, to me, <laughs> like that's, a, that's a pretty medium size to me, anyway, we are coming in with a hot 15 megapixel, I'm clapping this together because that's really important. 15 megapixels. Now I can hear you all sigh in unison to, to like, mm, 15 megapixels. This is like alien technology, okay? So this 15 megapixels hits like 50 megapixels. And you're going to see it in the images. And please, I say this now and I'll probably repeat myself. Whatever you see, whatever images I show of this from this camera, please just accept right now before you see any of them. Just accept that. There's massive amounts of compression going on. You know what? What device are you watching it on? Plus, you know, I actually, you know, don't. I know this is this is pretty cringe, right, to say this, but I actually upload these videos as MP4, right? So there's massive like loss of detail and compression. So, so what I'm trying to say? <laughs> oh my goodness, oh, MP4, like that's back. Like MP4, I'm surprised that even exists. Like that's got to be the next on the chopping block, right? MP4. Um, I'm surprised it hasn't been deleted. That just reminds me of like LimeWire downloading MP3s, MP4s. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. I'm getting old. Dearest Josephine, I'm getting old. Okay, so what I'm trying to express to you is that any images you see about this camera, 
just if they don't come through bitingly sharp with ridiculous amounts of information and clarity and sharpness and if they don't look that way when you're looking at them just accept that they are there okay because when I look at these images on my computer I've got to put sunglasses on that's how thick and drenched they are with color and detail and micro contrast and throw whatever words you want to throw at it these images are ridiculous like they this camera isn't a camera it's alien technology straight out of the bag it's alien technology um, I can't I won't say more than that but just accept that these images are like ridiculously good quality and you could blow these images up to the side of a building and it would look amazing okay so let's just give that as a given okay let's get that out of the way if you were ever wondering uh, are the images that good I'm here to tell you today pre-recorded of course that yes they are they are ridiculously good I've never used a camera with this amount of quality and detail and everything I could ever wish for yes that's ticked that box already that's already done so when you hear 15 megapixels don't get scared okay that's just that's completely normal it says 15 megapixels but that really means like 50 okay so don't stress about that it's a CMOS phobian sensor we got a 50 mil equivalent f 2.8 fantastic lens this lens is bonkers really really nice um couldn't ask for anything more fantastic lens do 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 this camera records images in its own sigma alien tech hardware you need to download sigma's own priority software just so you can see the photos oh that's annoying yeah get used to it this is sigma okay get used to it these guys and girls have not gone out of their way to make you a camera that is easy to use and fun and you know whoa, whoa. like you don't see like the advertising for this camera I could imagine like if there was a poster for Sigma cameras you're not gonna see like uh, you know a couple with you know the camera around their neck and they're like at a party or something and it's like whoa, this is a Sigma moment whoa, having a crazy time this is a crazy party everyone jump in and there's like you know everyone like come on jump in jump in and they're taking a photo and it's like ah Sigma doo -doo -doo. not happening okay the advert for this camera would be like people in lab coats and the camera would be like sitting there and there'd be like a robotic arm with a little like keypad or something and the robotic arm picks it up and is like Sigma you know there's some alien AI technology Sigma <clears throat> that would be it that's it that's what this camera isn't for fun okay if you thought this camera was meant to be for fun scrap that now you know me right I put in the hard yards every camera I review I want it to be fun you know I'm bringing the fun I'm bringing the crazies right I'm bringing the fun and the crazies look at my tone on this video this is what Sigma's done to me okay it's a fantastic camera okay spoiler alert it's an amazing camera okay but this is what it's done to me now I'm just just a normal guy using a weird camera and I don't I don't have any need for being crazy anymore like I'm just just gonna give you a normal boring review like everyone else um, so let's start off with those specs um, it's got USB 2.0 don't even know what that means don't even use it hasn't got GP <laughs> hasn't got GPS nah don't have time for that mate that's Sigma nah, I don't have time for that stuff mate GPS should we put it in nah nah leave it out okay no worries um, but yeah you need to have your own stuff does it have a microphone Pfft, of course not videography does it take videos does this camera do videos I didn't think this camera did videos there you go guys maybe it does JPEG motion video format 640 by 480 at 30 frames a second <whistles> check those stats yeah so you could easily make a movie with it obviously um, but basically yeah look I'm actually looking at the specs and there's like five things for specs there's like there's there's like there's no specs for this camera it's just a lens a sensor and a couple of buttons to get those two things working that's literally all there is okay so that's done <clears throat> let's look at DP review let's look at the review <laughs> oh my god I love this this is by someone called Walt water walker <laughs> water walker right back in September the 5th 2021 okay so this is a new review yeah you yeah, know technically new review all right, let's, this guy's given it two and a half stars. This comment's gotten three likes, and and <laughs> <laughs> the heading of this comment is quirky to say the least, tough to live with, but the results can be amazing. He's pretty much summed it up, right? 
Let, let's go through it. I'm just assuming this is what his accent is because this is what I assume everyone on DP Review sounds like. I bought this camera as a bit of a gamble and it certainly was. Shutter speed and ISO performances are pretty terrible. There is very funny lag in the shutter release as well. As one reviewer pointed out, if you could live with the hiccups, the image quality really has some merit. Colors are good, but you really need to keep the ISO down and need to really set up your shots. Nearly film-like in the approach to using the camera. Camera is basically retired now as the... Uh, <laughs> Here we go. Just wait. Sorry, I've got to click on it to see the full review. Oh, I can't even click on it. Oh, okay, I need to go to the forum now. Oh no, now we're in the forum, guys. Okay, so like I was saying, now we're reading it straight off the forum. Where, uh, let's see where we left off on that last sentence. Colors are good, but you really need to keep the ISO down and need to really set up your shots. Nearly film-like in the approach to using the camera. Camera is basically retired now as others that I own have surpassed it. Bang. Like, I love that. I love this guy's review. I love the way that he talks because I'm sure that's how he talks and he's nailed it like I'll be honest with you the guy's nailed it there's now no longer a need for my review because this guy gave it two and a half stars and he just smashed it all right so that was the first let's see what people's responses are to Mr. Waterwalker someone's replied to him and go well now that you've finished with it I'm sure one of us would love to buy it off you and he's probably going to be like yeah whatever you can have it for free Someone else has responded and like, are your cameras that surpass it as small? The tiny size combined with the sharpness of the lens is what I like about the DP2M the most. Oh, here we go. Plot thickens. <clears throat> Mr. Waterwalker comes back again with another block rock and beat. He goes, no, I have yet to find a suitable 1v1 replacement for this camera. Its sensor and images are so unique compared to most everything else I have seen. Sony makes a full frame compact. But to be frank, there is no way I'm going to spend that kind of money on a compact when I have other lenses on my list. Only thing that comes close is my Fujis, which I have a few. They all get there with colors. Big step up is usability. Autofocus on the Merrill was and still not great. Wow, was it going to evolve? Was Is the autofocus going to evolve? Is this camera like, has it got consciousness? Is this the singularity? thing it wouldn't surprise me because they're amazing cameras maybe the autofocus over time will just evolve it just the electronics themselves will evolve this is great i hope you're enjoying this because i'm having a blast i love this stuff man i love people's comments this is the best this is what i live for someone's beating up on him and saying he's <laughs> someone's Oh, that is, this is hilarious. So someone, someone else just chimed in on this conversation and said, dude, your review's way too late. There is literally thousands of reviews that say the exact same information. So there's no real new information here. We already knew it. You're wasting your time. I just love that. So, so, and then the guy was like, yeah, show us some photos. Stop talking and just show us photos. That conversation ended. And then someone else has chimed in when he said that, um, He's retired the camera. He doesn't use it anymore. Some, I love this. I love this. Internet just, the internet provides, right? This guy just chimes in. What's his name? Dansky. Dansky0224, senior member, right? Just chimes in and he says, I'll give you 50 bucks for that old junk of junk. <laughs> I'll give you 50 bucks for that old junk of junk. You know, that's it. That's, hey, what more do you have to say? It's an old junk of junk. It's only worth 50 bucks. And you know what? He's probably not wrong either. Oh, someone says they'll bid 65, so now it's a bidding war. Someone's like, hey, this isn't supposed to be an auction. <laughs> someone says there's all kinds of hazardous materials in that thing that need to be properly disposed. I'm losing money at $50 if I'm paying 50 for it. This is great. This is, a, this is why DP review is DP review. Bahul213 replies with a snappy... Not in this small corner of the internet. I've even considered placing a superior bid of no less than $5 New Zealand. If sender paid postage. <laughs> not to use or dispose the DP2M, but to ensure my Merrill is not stoved alone in its cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got 4.3 star review on, on the old DP review. Um... What can I tell you that hasn't already been said? It's, it's, 
this camera is basically useless in every sense of the word except for the fact that it gives banging images it gives total stonken banger of an image all the time all day all night this thing is banger times 5000 um, it's funny I say all night because it doesn't really shoot at night um, do you remember there was that point in your life in your photography journey and, and I, I say you because it, we've all done it right we've all done it there was a point in your life where you said to yourself right maybe you read something about how good lenses were or you know about image you said to yourself right as a, as a photographer as, as a hobbyist as whatever you are right on this journey you said to yourself I don't care what it looks like I don't care if it's uncomfortable to hold I don't care anything all I care about is image quality that's all I care about IQ that's all I care about it can look dumb it can have a dumb name on it it can be so bad in every other department but as long as that IQ is just through the roof I could use it I could, it could be my camera it could be my jam well guess what that prayer got answered with this camera okay because it does nothing else good except image quality um, and I think the reason why there's so much sort of you know back and forth with this camera people either love it or hate it is that it is just so horrible in every other department and you sit there and you say to yourself but that doesn't matter as long as I get good images and now if that's your point of view and if you're at that place right now this is definitely the perfect camera for you because it gives the best images ever like there is nothing to this day that comes close to this camera and I know there's been other reviews and apparently the the Nikon full frame you know which do amazing quality they're you know pretty much there or beating it apparently but there's still something special about the micro contrast on these lenses that whole factor of having a fixed lens to a sensor so that you're going to just get that that more precise um, measurement of the glass to the sensor which is just it's just infinitely perfection this the images from this camera are perfection everything else sucks hard okay focusing inconsistent slow battery life yeah it's rubbish um, ISO is low yeah you know that was you if you're using old digicams you already knew that but all right so ISO is pretty low what's worse what I what I find is worse than all of those things put together is the exposure latitudes crap right so so when you think of shooting this camera think of slide film and I've said this before I've said this before Sigmas are like shooting slide film exposure latitudes very small you need to nail it and you need to make sure the subject that you're shooting is well lit right however you decide to do that's up to you but you can't have this crazy exposure and just go oh I'll just pick up the shadows and blacks in uh, in post it uh, just doesn't a mm -mm. little bit it works but no it doesn't work right it's 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 think of it like slide film so yes it's like shooting slide film 100 speed slide film except because I have said this in the past that it's like shooting slide film except there is one difference so let me let me clarify that today the difference between the Sigma and shooting slide film is slide film is actually fun to shoot the Sigma on the other hand is not fun to use at all so comparing it to slide film is actually not fair to slide film slide films awesome you can put it in so many different cameras medium format you know 35 millimeter you can have a nice little camera enjoy the experience heck you could put it into some modern film camera like a like a Canon 1N and it's you know all digitized and you can run a gun with that thing fantastic right Sigma no it's it's like slide film that's not fun to use okay so just stripping the whole fun element out of it that's a lot with the experience of shooting with this camera it's not it's not an enjoyable experience now you're probably saying wait a sec shutter slaps you're just saying what everyone else has said it's not really anything new I, I get that that and I suppose to some degree that's true however please keep in mind 
the kind of content that I make. And if you've ever purchased any of the cameras that I've recommended in the past, you might realize that, wow, these, these cameras are very quirky and some of them are very difficult to use. Some of the cameras I've recommended are a scale focus that's really difficult. If you're not into scale focusing, you're gonna have a horrible time with that camera. You're probably gonna say it's the worst camera on the planet. Me, I'm loving the thing, it's fantastic. So when I tell you that a camera isn't fun to use, it's really cumbersome and, and just not a great experience, difficult to use. Oh, what other descriptive words do I know? Um, it's, it's jarring, it it's, doesn't really excite you, there's nothing, I guess it's solid, it's a very solidly built camera, it has a fantastic lens, but I'm talking about the actual day-to-day -day use of it, it's, it's not enjoyable, it's just not, and like I said, I love shooting weird cameras that are very difficult and quirky, but this does, this camera does not engage you in any way, it does not support you or help you or, or it's not trying to it's not trying to be your friend in any way it does not care it does not care it has no it does not want to build a relationship with you it does not want to become your number one camera it just does not care you 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 set the dials you you set the camera you focus you take the shot and you get what you get that's it and if you work hard enough you can get incredible shots and that's why I really see this camera as like an art reproduction camera. This is the perfect camera for art reproduction because it's not about enjoying the experience. No one cares about that. It's about getting a final product that's seamless and that is accurate. So for me, this is an art reproduction camera. You could do fine art with it, which I personally find really exciting. I love fine art images. You could do landscape with it. You definitely could do landscape. You know, obviously on a tripod, landscape's great. You could do cityscapes. You could do, you could do architectural photography with this camera. Fantastic for architectural photography. Really high quality images, fantastic. But any kind of family shots, any kind of quick run and gun, any kind of just movement, animals, any kind of movement, it's, it's not happening. It's, it really isn't. Now, don't get me wrong. Of course, I've gotten some shots of my kids and, and you know, moving subjects. But it was not easy. And it definitely was not fun. Okay, so it's just not that kind of camera. You're not going to be getting happy snaps. And while I think of that, another thing, the Fovian sensor is bitingly accurate. You don't always want cameras to be bitingly accurate when you're taking portraits and family photos. You don't always want 100% accuracy. I took... I took some selfies with this camera and, and the wrinkles and lines on my face that I did not know existed, they were prominent, they were pronounced on this camera. What I'm saying is it's, it's so accurate that it can become very messy. The image can become messy from how accurate it is. Now again, if you're doing art reproduction, that's fantastic, that's what you want. You want every brush stroke, every little bristle and how it affects the paint, you want all of it that because that's all part of the experience. But when you're taking a portrait now all of a sudden you're entering a realm where it's too accurate the colors are too too stark it kills me it's not really built for that are there people out there that are getting amazing portrait photos with this camera of course there is there's someone with a studio who's getting the lighting just right they're putting filters on to probably soften the image a bit one of those you know glimmer glass filters or something and softening that image up a little bit and they're doing a lot of post work of course don't get me wrong, you can definitely get any image you want out of this camera, but it's how hard you work for it. For me personally, I'm starting to understand, and I'm, I'm going to make a video separately about this subject, but I'll, I'll sort of, you know, I'll tease a little bit for a future video, is that I'm starting to realize for me personally, the image quality and the actual image itself is secondary to the experience. Okay, now I know that's weird because why would someone who likes taking photos feel that the photo is secondary to the actual experience? That, that's a good conversation we will get into in the future. But, but yes, now listen, okay, but for this camera, it doesn't have that. It just does not have that 
that engaging experience. However, it gives you amazing images and they're very amazing images. Now I want to just rant and I want to just chat about the images for a second because there's something you need to know about these images. There's a hidden dark side to these images, right? There's a hidden dark side to these images. What are you talking about, Shutter Slaps? You're all over the place, mate. No, you've got you to just... I hope you understand what I mean. I hope you get the vibe of what I'm trying to express, right? I'm trying to make a different review. I'm not just giving you stats and figures and numbers, right? None of that stuff always adds up. If you want to do that, go to DP Review. The guys are there. They'll tell you all about it. Guys and girls will tell you all about it, okay? But that's not why you come to my channel. You want a real world, seat of your pants, sort of, you know, overview of the camera. So here I am. I'm, I'm dropping some dark side information about this camera. And I, and I put that... Anyway, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting mixed up. All right, before I lose the thought. Talking about the imaging, bitingly sharp, you know, sometimes being a negative, how good the IQ is can sometimes be a negative. Let me talk a little bit about the black and white images of this camera. Now this, from what I understand, I could be wrong, you know, destroy me in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, but from what I understand, this camera doesn't have an IR filter, okay? Which basically means that you get more of a full spectrum. So when you go into black and white, you're getting that real proper, that, that real monochrome look. Black and whites are just vivid. Now I'm telling you, this camera's black and whites are so vivid, it's out of this world. It is out of this world. Um, and I'm going to say it right here, right now. You can quote me saying it. I don't like them. I don't like the black and whites out of this camera. I don't. Are they good? 100%. 100%. Is that beautiful grey mid-tones? 100%. It's got all those beautiful grey mid-tones. Why don't you like it? Because it's it's too sharp and accurate. And it's so sharp. And the contrast is so intense. And and the, the and I'll, I'll put some up so you, you'll see what I'm talking about. The images are so vividly sharp and contrasted that it's difficult for me to look at like i actually find the image difficult to view it's not it's not enjoyable to look at the image you know and i know that's probably difficult to understand you're probably thinking well that makes no sense but it is it's too much too much of a good thing you know the black and white images out of this camera i reckon you could blow it up to the side of a building and it's it's just got that much detail and that much sharpness, that much clarity, that much just mm, information. It's it's too much. It's too much. And I, I do enjoy black and white photography. I love it. But I love that kind of smoother, chilled out, you know, Kodak T-Max, chilled out. Even that, um, and it, look, if, I do enjoy contrasty photos. Don't get me wrong. You know, I like that um, Street Pan 400. Boof, got a video about that too. Love Street Pan. I do like the contrasty black and white. And then when I looked at even the Leica monochrome and looked at the images from that, it's the same. It, they're too much for me. I find them unenjoyable to view. And that to me is like counterproductive. I've created a camera that's so good that it's actually not enjoyable. Think of it this way, right? Think of it this way. Imagine, imagine watching Home Alone, right? Home Alone 1, right? You're watching a VHS video of Home Alone 1 but you are watching it on like an 8K cinema TV with just the best of the best everything. And, and you're plugging your, your VCR into this thing. How's it gonna look? It's gonna look like it's gonna look dreadful. It's gonna look dreadful. And if there's any video gamers out there, it would be the same as like if you plugged in an old retro system, like, like a, a Super Nintendo. And instead of plugging it into like a CRT monitor, which is like the best, you know, an old tube TV, that it looks the best on tube TV. It's just, there's something about it. It looks so much just right. It fits right. But if you plug a Super Nintendo and you convert it into HDMI and convert it into 4K or 8K and put it on a massive screen, it just looks wrong. It's, it, it feels too much. It's too much. And it gets lost. And this is the first time ever I've really started to understand that saying, and I've never understood this saying before, but now this camera has helped me to understand the saying, I can't see the forest for the trees. That's exactly what's happening, is I cannot see the forest for the trees. 
because the information, the black and white, is so intense that the image gets lost in it. It becomes more about the sharpness, the clarity, the color, the, or the black and white obviously doesn't have color, but you know, it, it's too much. It's too much at this stage. So that's where there's an issue. That's where I find there is definitely a point where it crosses a line and it gets into a realm of being difficult to read images, difficult to understand the image in its, in its space. And for me, that's a massive negative. For me, that's, 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 a no, that's a no deal. That's a no bueno. That's a no bueno on that one, okay? Then if we flick to color, if you flick to color on this one, um, the issue I'm having with colors, and again, this is the best way I can describe it, is I feel that this sensor renders lifeless images in this vivid, um, it, it, it almost resurrects them and makes them this vivid uh, uh, intenseness that feels like you've really captured a slice of actual time. You know, when you take a photo of a lifeless subject, you know how there's some cultures that believe that, um, some indigenous cultures that believe that taking a photo steals the soul of its subject? Of course, I didn't subscribe to that belief system. Um, I say of course because obviously I'm a Westerner, I've grown up in a Western world. However, I now reconsider that thought because of this camera. This camera, when you look at the image, it feels like it has actually stolen the soul out of, out of everything it takes. It's stolen not only the soul, but also time and space. I feel like it's snipped, it's just snipped a piece of time and space, compressed it onto a digital format, and they're going, here you go, here's an actual snippet of time and space. Um, which sounds fantastic in theory, um, but I find it's, it's weirdly dead and alive at the same time. The images look dead and alive at the same time. It's a strange thing. I can't fully express it, but it's, it's a bit odd. Then when you get to portraits and taking photos of actually people, it does a big flippy, does a big flippy 180, and it renders it lifeless. It just, it's, the clarity's there, the information's there, the accuracy's there. It's captured everything to the point, but it just, it, it's too much to the point where the image feels lifeless. And I think that's completely counterproductive to, to what you actually need, correct? right? You're taking a portrait, you want it to be alive, you want it to be living, you want it to be full of full of the juices of, of life, the, the elixir of life, and here it is rendering an image completely dead. It's, it's some, I don't, I don't even know how it does it, but it, you know, and I'm sure it can be tweaked in post, and you warm up the picture a bit, and you, and you, you know, give a bit of this, and the, you put the shadows, and do a bit of work here, and I'm sure you can soften the, the final product, but I'm not. I'm, that's not why I take photos. I don't take photos so I can sit in front of a computer and edit the hell out of them to try and revive it, right? It's like you're, I feel like I'm working in an ambulance, a photography ambulance, trying to revive photos that have, <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my analogies, my analogies. I'm at like, I'm at like I'm a first, first responder to dead photos. And I'm trying to revive them. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that guy. So, so for me, that's a bit of a deal breaker for me. However, the images are fantastic. All this being said, let's let's take some time now and go through a gallery of images that I've created with this camera. Let's take some time now and and let's have a look. Let's see what you think. Okay. So enjoy this. Relax. There's going to be lots of images because I really want to try and give you a really good idea of, of what it's good at. And while you look at the images, one, enjoy how amazing this camera's images are. Enjoy that. Right? But second of all, in the back of your head, just notice the style of images. Notice the subjects. And, there's, and then you start to see a little, a little theme. And it's not a creative theme that I've, I've wanted to, but this is what the camera forces you to do. It forces you into taking a certain kind of photo. So notice that while you have a look as well. But anyway, enjoy.
Wasn't that enjoyable? And, and did you get what I mean? How good are those images? They're, they're unbelievable. They're untouched. The IQ is, is off the Richter scale. However, for me, I feel like it just, it just, it just had to go too far into that weird realm. It had to be just that little bit too far for me. And I feel like it's too far gone. Would I recommend this camera? I wouldn't recommend it because I don't believe it's it's made for everyone. It's made for a very particular purpose. That's all. It's not a every person's camera. It's a very particular camera for a very particular subject. So again, think about it. If you're going to be taking photos of art reproductions, photo reproductions, um, you know, architecture, landscape, you're going to be using, you're going to Robbie Maynard the hell out of this thing and you're going to have a tripod everywhere you go. If that's the kind of images that you're already making and you're just thinking, hey, I, I don't want to shoot film all the time or I want something a bit more compact, not so heavy, this is the camera for you. This is the camera for you, okay? If it's, if it's, hey, it's a tiny camera with great image quality, I can fit it in my pocket and I can just take it with me on trips and just when I see cool stuff, I can shoot some photos. It's not, it's not really going to give you that vibe. It's not a fun take everywhere camera. Definitely isn't. So would I recommend it? My answer would be no, I don't recommend it. Not to say that it's a bad camera, but for all those issues, I would feel like I'm steering someone into a, into a, to a, a tough decision. If you can borrow one and use it for a little bit, I highly recommend that. Um, something else just to talk about autofocus, the autofocus on this thing is hit and miss at best. Okay. Even when you've got a subject that's well lit, sometimes it can just not register. And if the subject is moving as well. So again, if you're using live models or, or live situations, it just will not focus. It will not be able to understand what your subject is. Even if you put it in the middle of the picture, middle of the frame, it still struggles. It still finds it difficult. So it does struggle in the focusing, okay? It, ju it just does. It needs to be a still subject with you holding it dead still. It needs to be good lighting and it will, it will track it. Um, I think it has got set scale focusing. You can set it to one meter, you know, but I don't know. I don't even want to play with this kind of stuff. Will I hang on to this camera? Well, that's a tough answer. That's a tough question, okay? How dare you hit me with such a tough question? That's a very tough question. This is the dilemma that I have, and I'm sure I'm not alone, and I bet you there's a lot of other YouTubers that feel the same as me. Once I've finished making a video with a camera, it then just goes away, because I'm always thirsty for new content. I'm always thirsty for new products, new new experiences. I'm, I'm just hungry, I'm a ravenous wolf for experience. And having a camera that I've already reviewed, I've already had the experience with just sitting there in a shelf, after a while, I just get sick of it and I'll move it on. There are a small collection of cameras I will never sell and that have entered my, 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 my holy grail, um, which I'll make a video about that one day and be able to let you know what's going on there. Um, but at this stage, look, I, I see myself getting rid of it eventually, eventually. If I don't, it doesn't worry me because it is an amazing camera. If I do sell it, I guarantee you I will regret it. I know I will, it's it's a fact. I'll, I'll, I'll sell it and then I'll see some of the images later and go, wow, the, that image quality is out of this world. Why did I sell it? I'm such a fool. But you know what? It's all part of the experience. You've got to keep moving. I'm a shark. I keep moving forward, okay? I don't move back. I keep moving forward. All right, you little travelers. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Get back to me and, and I hope this has helped to answer some questions or inspired you to get one or inspired you to do whatever it is you do. Um, enjoy, man, and have fun. And as always, I will be catching you on that next one.